Hello. All right. So this week, uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue the format of what we've been doing of just flip flopping games we've been playing with uh, news. So uh, really, there's not a whole hell of a lot of news going on. So we thought we'd talk about Battlefield Five a little bit. So uh, John, since this is more your jam than mine, why don't you uh, why don't you kick us off with a, what your kind of thoughts and impressions are on this thing so far? Yeah, I thought I just thought it'd be fair to talk about Battlefield after talking about Call of Duty last week. Yeah, uh, kind of and also we, we hinted, we kind of hinted at a, we talked a little bit about it last week. We just didn't know anything official about it. Yeah, uh, it's World War II, like everyone thought it would be. The, in the trailer, at the beginning of the trailer, I thought they were going alt history when I saw the prosthetic arm on a character, and I was like, oh, is this alt history? And I guess it's not. It was, I'm still really confused by that by some things in the trailer that it, they they made some choices I guess you know for some aesthetic choices that are uh, different but I guess it's straight up history I think it's just World War Two but they're kind of focusing on lesser known battles uh, according to uh, like campaign wise or whatever they do with the campaign I think it's going to be similar to Battlefield One's campaign yeah more uh, like little set piece things yeah, yeah. Uh, to get you used to the different aspects of the multiplayer it was kind of what one did uh, the, one had a lot of promise but they kind of didn't nail it there's a lot there's they could they, it could be done really well that opening mission in battlefield one's really good yeah that uh, I, I think we talked about this when I played it like that I think we did too it, it really upset me like just how like oh man I'm I am I am on board with the way this is going then it just turned into like every other yeah, like, like single player campaign. Yeah, that first one's pretty grim. That first mission's pretty grim because yeah. you just go and uh, yeah, they kind of die, and then you yeah, turn into can... somebody else, and then they die, and you become yeah. somebody else. It's just like oof. yeah, and it, then it kind of becomes more classic battlefield uh, or recent cam- battlefield campaigns. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's that. But I mean, what you go to battlefield for is the multiplayer. Like it's always it's always basically been just a multiplayer game. Um, and uh, bad company. yeah, this is bad company, which is which are the good ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I will not hear otherwise. Nope. Uh, but uh, some let's see the the big news. Uh, there are no microtransactions. Like the microtransactions uh, seem to be cosmetic, I believe. And there's no season pass this time. Uh, instead, yeah. they will instead all maps uh, will be free. Uh, so they, you know, so as not to separate the player base, which has been kind of a common practice by uh, the console shooters for a while now. Yeah, and it's kind of funny that this uh, this move is being done by EA, who's you know largely, I don't know, maybe maybe some of this is from the backlash from Battlefront Two. I wonder. Yeah, I feel like a lot. <laughs> there was a lot of backlash for that. I mean, we talked about it on here. It was like it was big enough for us to talk to spend time talking about. Yeah. Um, even though neither of us played it. <laughs> oh, actually, I played the single player up to... A, oh. Like, there was, like, the first expansion mission, I think, and then I kind of... Like, I rented it and beat it in, like, two days, so... Okay. Was it any good? It, it was a Star Wars shooter. I mean, so... It was okay. <laughs> okay. It did its job. Um, I got my uh, I got my six bucks worth out of it, I guess. So, <laughs> so, yeah, they seem to be leaning towards the power to the player thing after their whole uh, debacle. Yeah. Um, Take a lesson from GameStop. Power to the players, baby. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, I mean, it's it's a practice I I, I approve. Uh, Titanfall Two does that uh, when it comes to like the big console shooters. Unfortunately, Titanfall Two didn't get the, doesn't have the audience that th- this game does. It yeah. should, but uh, it doesn't. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, that, that's that's positive. Uh, they added they added some new modes. Uh, I f- what the, I forget what the big one is called, but it, it I think oh, Grand Operations, uh, which uh, combines multiple game types into one super long mission across multiple maps, and that kind of tells a, a sort of um, narrative across the match, based on how well each side each side does. Um, so it's kind of like a miniature like actual battle, which is kind of which is kind of really cool in terms of uh, this from like conceptually sounds really cool. Yeah, you know, I've always kind of had this, like, thing of... I, really, I think the first game I ever... That, that caught my attention of doing this sort of thing was, like, End War, where it was, like, some ongoing thing. But Battlefield doesn't really sound like it's doing this, but it kind of sounds like a more reasonable thing to do with this sort of thing, of, like, a constant, like, back and forth between 
I guess, factions, if you will, of like for control of stuff. And it seems like this is kind of going for that, but just a little, well, maybe a lot scaled down and not like a persistent world. And I kind yeah. of appreciate that. So it's always something that's been it, interesting concept to me. I've just never seen anyone do it. I think um, there was a sh- early like 360 shooter, uh, may have been on the PS3, I don't remember, but uh, Frontline's Fuel of War, I believe they did something similar to that too. But it's been so long. I, th- uh, I, I think they did. God, I forgot, I forgot about that game. Jeez. Yeah, the only reason <laughs> yeah. I caught it was I was looking on the uh, uh, backwards compatibility list on uh, Xbox One, and that was uh, that's on there for some reason. Even though the servers for the multiplayer have been shut down, and let me tell you that campaign's okay. But man, I I don't I wouldn't pay ten bucks for that campaign. So yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, this. But uh, Grand Operation sounds like uh, natural evolution to Rush, which is like the classic uh, battlefield mode. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just seems like that, but just to a whole other scale. Um, and Battlefield has always done scale really well. So I think that I, I find a lot of promise in that idea. And it sounds like one of the coolest new additions they've done in a while. Um, other, other than that, like the small, smaller, uh, they do uh, also does a four player co op mode, from, I believe, uh, in terms of just game type, uh, gameplay types. Uh, then they, they've, re, they've overhauled the movement in the game to give your character more options uh, from sliding, shooting, laying on your back, moving in all different directions while prone, just a lot of different uh, movement options for your character to make it give it a more uh, tactical feel, I guess. Uh, and I believe every... Oh, yes, every character can now revive. Uh, it just takes longer for non-medics to revive characters, and they don't get as much health back, I think. Um which is interesting, also. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a that's a handy decision, actually. So yeah, uh, they seem they uh, they still want to you know keep the the classes. They just want to make the classes feel um, more distinct. I believe, uh, and they just keep working towards getting that feel. Uh, so yeah, a lot of the things they announced sounds really good and actually get me interested in it. I still would wish it was modern as opposed to World War Two, but um, I mean. Uh, I'm I'm not surprised. No one is surprised at World War Two. That's been the rumor since like Battlefield One came out. Yeah. So um, it comes out uh, October nineteenth. You can get it, I think, like a week early if you pre-order it. Isn't that the uh, like about the same time as Call of Duty? I think a week after. If you pre-order it, it comes out the day before Call of Duty. I think or okay. around or actually, yeah. Call of Duty is October twelfth. I think. Okay, so it's in the same ballpark basically, which is yeah. Wow. Yes, they they tend they. Usually, call, they have about a, a month separation or a few weeks separation. This is kind of closer than usual. Yeah, they're uh, they're going right yeah. for it with this one. Yeah, I wonder if that's I wonder if that's why Call of Duty decided to move it up a month. I I don't know honestly. It's um, uh, also you can customize characters, and there are female soldiers in this game. You know, when I was watching the trailer, mm-hmm. not not once did I have a thought in my head. Oh, that's a woman in World War II. That's weird. I literally never thought. I literally never crossed my mind when I was watching the trailer. <laughs> it was, uh, and then I saw like the the discourse about it afterwards, and I was like, oh yeah, that is. I guess that is uncommon, <laughs> or you know, but I was more distracted by the prosthetic robot arm thing <laughs> than I was by the. <laughs> that was what was uh, getting me because I kept trying to decide if this was an an alt history thing or not. Beating uh, Metal Gear Solid Five to the uh, to the punchline on that one, <laughs> as far as when uh, useful prosthetics actually came into battlefield play. <laughs> yeah, uh, hopefully you can rocket punch in this one. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, yeah, if, see if I can be a woman soldier and she screams rocket punch, I'll be, I'll be a happy man. There. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so yeah, there is a weird, unnecessary discourse around like women being in World War Two, a World War Two game. But who? It's a fucking video game. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, like. Yeah. It's multiplayer. Let people pick their gender for their fucking character. Yeah, if they want to be a woman, fine. Who cares? I mean, I, we, we were talking about this off the air. It's like, if you're really that pissed off about it, you should be happy, then you can shoot women. Okay? So just get get over it. Okay? God, just... Yeah. Also, also it, if you're happy that you can sh- shoot women, you have a... You, have, you got some major issues. So. Yes. Yes. <laughs> fucking... Fuck you, whoever that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's just like, oh, for God's sake. It's like, if, if this is really, really the line in the sand you're going to draw, it's like, okay, so they're putting women in, in a fictional thing. It's like, who gives a shit? I mean, they were involved. I mean, you know, yes, it was, you know, I don't want to say mostly, but we'll say mostly males that were involved in the fighting. But, you know, females did their part in World War II, too, with, with fighting. So it's just like, who cares? Just gives a shit. It's a 
fucking online shooter. Just let them have it. Who gives two flying fucks? I really don't understand people getting all bent out of shape about it. Yeah. Um, of course, visually, the game looks really good. Yeah. Frostbite. Um, Frostbite looks really good with realistic uh, in, in realistic games. So, yeah, I'm... Uh, I am more intrigued by Battlefield and Call of Duty uh, than I thought I would be this year, so that's kind of that's something at least. Yeah, um, this is uh, probably something I'll uh, I'll rent just to play the single player thing and kind of throw it aside after that. So, yeah, I mean, I'm but uh, I'm I'm the multiplayer guy, so I will. I think I'll be checking both these out. The problem is like Red Dead comes out a couple weeks after both of these, mm-hmm. so yeah, <laughs> it's always that. Uh, yeah, hopefully by then I finish Spider Man because that comes out like a month before these. So uh, yeah, early September, September seventh, yeah, something, something like that. Like that. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's looking like a pretty strong contender for one of my favorites this year. Like I, I, I it just my son has like, like seriously gotten into Spider Man, and it's just kind of like, oh, we, I'm really wanting to play this one now because actually it looks yeah, like a very competent Spider Man game. So I'm a huge Spider Man nerd, so I'm looking forward to uh, all all that kind of stuff in the game. Um, I am wondering if they're going to do the uh, if because they they were talking about I think it was on like one of the Game Informer shows uh, they were talking about like they're going to have a bunch of like costumes in there and some of them that were we'll say obscure I'm wondering if there's going to be the spider armor in there that was in there for like one ep- or one issue uh, it's we'll, like a we'll black see. outfit like, with like metal on it and yeah, yeah I, I, I mean I it's know, a last one fight about. and it blasted one fight so I feel like that was in one of the NeverSoft ones but I could be mistaken. Mm, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of costumes. I'm I'm sure, and I'm sure there will be a lot of paid costumes to get to from people. Yeah, uh, yeah but let's so, so be looking forward to that in Red Dead. And then now these, like the fall is looking kind of kind of interesting for me. It was I'm kind of liking where it's where it's heading. Uh, yeah, that's all I got for Battlefield. I guess uh, it's it's Battlefield just with uh, some additions that I'm interested in. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, for me, it's a single-player thing. It always kind of draws me into these experiences, and if I enjoy it enough that I want to go online, I will. Like I said, Battlefield 2 is really the last like multiplayer shooter I played with any sort of regularity. Or, uh, no, uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2. So, I was going to say, yeah, uh, you mean Bad Company, or yeah, do you yeah, not play that online? You that... know, I played, uh, I played 1943 a bit, which actually just hit backwards compatibility with Xbox. That, that, was, a, that was a cool game. Yeah. It was, 50, I it. I mean, I it was, it was like, like a $20 bucks, right? or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah it was... Like, it was uh... Yeah, that was, a, that was a cool game. Yeah, um, it, it was nice to break up uh, the Bad Company 2 uh, sessions with that. Got it. Yeah, but I played a lot of Bad Company 2. Uh, you was... and me both, man. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, for me to play any... Like, I, I would come home and play it online. Like, sometimes I would see uh, Anthony online, and I would go pop on, and we would play for, like, four hours after I got out of work. It was like, okay, this is... Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, they just haven't nailed the, the feel that that game had since then. Uh, yeah. Oh, well. Uh, I guess that, that does it for news this week, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not a, not a whole hell of a lot going on. Not a whole lot, I guess. Yeah. Killer 7 is coming to PC, anyone that cares. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> so. they'll, uh, maybe, maybe they'll work out some of those control issues that that game kind of made, has always like deterred me from playing it. So. Cause, man, yeah, for I sure. tried a few times, and it just I could not get, get to it. Like, I... I'm normally okay with, uh, we'll say, not great control schemes if there's something interesting there, but, man, that was not a good control scheme for that game, so, I mean, it's been, I don't know, it has to have been 10 years since I've tried it last, so, but... It's a I, suit, it's a Suda joint, right? It's like... Yes. Yeah, it's very Suda. Um, yeah, so, if you like Suda games, and you've never played Killer7, you should probably just try Killer7. Yeah, or, um, or watch a playthrough, I don't know. Yeah, whatever whatever, whatever gets you there. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. exactly, yeah. yeah. Story-wise, it seems like the thing that's interesting, so. Yeah. Anyway, um, so let's move on to what we've been playing here. Uh, I'll, I'll kick off, because I've got three kind of small things to talk about, but... Um, have you have you played Call of Duty or Call of War as Gunslinger? <laughs> yes, I have played Call of Duty. Yes, uh, uh, Call of War. I have not. I actually have never played a Call of War as. A game. Okay, I am incredibly surprised you have not played uh, Gunslinger based on your uh, uh, fandom of of westerns. I know. I've always actually wanted to. I just never got around to doing it. Um, I do. I do love westerns. Um, and yeah, I was playing this, and I was like, "Oh, this this is probably right up John's alley." I'm sure he'll have. 
something to talk about with me with this because I'm sure he's played it because it's a Western and you have not played it, which surprises <laughs> the shit out of me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. You yeah. know. <laughs> so this was my uh, this was my retrograde pick of, of this month. Um, it came out five years ago. And so basically the, the, the whole thing of this is it's like an arcade shooter. Um, racking up points is sort of the big thing with it um, as far as like gameplay goes, uh, just building up combos and stuff like that. It's it's not terribly, terribly original. What I think it does is very cool, like storytelling wise. Um, I'm, I, I'm kind of, kind of give a quick synopsis of this because I'm just, I, I'd, I'd rather write about it. And yeah, because that, that will be there forever. And this podcast will probably, uh, you know, after three more of these go up, we'll never be listened to again. So <laughs> <laughs> that's just the way weekly podcasts go. No one goes back in the archives and like, hey, I wonder what they were talking about. Like, you know, the, the, yeah, anyway. Um, storytelling wise, it does something very cool where, um, the, the main character, Silas Greaves, goes into a bar, starts telling the story, or basically his life story to these people at, at the bar. And as the as the game kind of goes on, um, like, things in the game will happen as he's changing the story. Like, somebody will call him out on something or say, like, well, this didn't happen. And part of me wonders, um, as you, you're, you're, playing as, or you're playing as Silas Greaves, telling his story, but I wonder if the character that's actually, like, imagining quote unquote, all these things happening is um, the sort of like bright eyed young guy who's reading all these dime, no- dime novels uh. um, because he'll like, he ran into, uh, is it Pat Garrett that killed Billy the Kid? Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, he'll mention that he, he, that's what, or like, you know, at the end of this thing, it's like, and that's when I met Pat Garrett and they'll have a showdown or whatever together. And it, um, you know, Silas, you know, will end up killing him. And it's a, wait a second, Pat Garrett didn't, it didn't die there. No, 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 no. And the guy's like, well, I said I met him. I didn't say I killed him, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it'll, it'll kind of rewind. And then it'll have you going, going through the same process up to a certain point where you would like run into him and then do the showdown where you just run mm-hmm. into him. And he'd like basically punch you in the back of the head and knock you unconscious and bring you to jail. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. So it's like, so I do wonder. And then like, you know, you'll be sitting there fighting people and he'll say like, you know, like, oh, we're fighting an Apache horde, or, you know, these guys fought, like, an Apache horde, and, 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 and so you'll be, actually be shooting Apaches, and then said, wait, there were Apaches here? And he's like, no, I didn't say I was shooting Apaches, I said they fought like they were Apaches, and then it will rewind, and all the Apaches will then become, you know, people in a, you know, just, like, white people in a gang, basically, coming at you, so it's like, oh, okay, it's kind of an interesting thing, so I do wonder, gameplay-wise, if you're coming at it from this, uh, this young guy's, uh, perspective, of what the story is being told to him. So I don't know. It's, it's a cool game. Uh, I enjoyed it. The, uh, the showdowns, I'm kind of, I don't know, like I kind of like them at the same time. Like, I, some, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe just me. Like I never really got the hang of them where I felt completely competent enough to get it. Um, there's like basically like a two part thing to it where you have to use the left stick to keep your hand mm-hmm. over your gun to draw okay. faster and the right stick you use to keep it focused on the guy that you're, uh, that you're having the showdown with. Uh, occasionally, I'd say like 75% of the time, the guys will walk back and forth and you have to move along with them. But the faster you move it, it will stop getting or gaining focus. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of one of those things of like, it, every time I would get to it, it would take me a few tries to get through some of them. And some of them were a little bit more complicated than others. There was one where you would have to take out two guys at the same time. That yeah. Was not a, not a great experience. And, and I'm me. guessing it kills the tension of the scene when you have to redo it over and over again. Uh, yeah. Thankfully yeah, they so. made a very smart decision of, just before all the showdowns would go down, they would um, do a, uh, like you know, somebody would have a little dialogue thing. And rather than repeat the dialogue every single time you die, it would just bring you right back to that spot without repeating the dialogue. Kind of like, okay, here's the 45th time I'm going to hear this fucking line. Great. It would just kind of kill that. So I think it was a smart I, decision on that part. I hate, when, I hate when games do that. I don't know what I was playing recently. I, I think it might have been God of War, where the boss fights don't re- they don't restart the dialogue when you go back into a boss fight. Like it just you just keep you just get to keep fighting. I think my, I think it was God of War that does that, and I always appreciate it. Well, I mean, yeah. So it it's always a real momentum killer when you have to fucking listen to a thing talk again. Yeah. Or or like the the bosses that talk during the fight, and you hear like as the further you get, like the further their dialogue goes goes along, and it's just. Hand him talking over it. Yeah. Video games, man. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, also, Silas Greaves is a great cowboy name. Yeah, I really, yeah. really, really like yeah. that. So. And the ending is kind of cool, too. I won't I won't get into it in case you ever want to go back to it. But um, what it does is pretty interesting. The way it kind of gets there. Uh, there's a lot of little, like, little story drips in there. The story's not, like, incredibly, like, deep or anything. But I, I want to say, like, this is basically um, Wild West Force Gump. 
<laughs> okay. For like so every just, every big event and every yeah. big shootout, like somehow Silas Grease was involved in this thing, and it's like okay. So it's, so it's like a Western Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> so, something like, to that effect. Yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. like yeah, it's kind of weird. It's just like as I'm playing it, like it just immediately brought me to Forrest Gump. Like oh hey, I happen to manage to be involved in this at the same time. So I was like okay, well that's weird, but yeah, whatever. So. But yeah, I I, I I appreciated what this game did, and I I, I rather enjoyed it. There's just oh, a I, couple of pickups there. It was so. it was published by Ubisoft, wasn't it? Because that that would explain it. <laughs> That's all. That, it's uh, it is a Western Assassin's Creed game. Mm-hmm. Although this oh, man, I don't. I, I think this was maybe Techland's like kind of last hurrah. I don't know if they made it. Techland, for this. yeah, uh, dying dying light, and uh, oh, did they? Okay, and Dead Island, I believe, is Techland. Ooh. We both, yeah. Okay. Dying light's good. <laughs> I, I've, I've heard good things about dying yeah. light. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dead good. Island, I've. Uh, there was I, a guy who I, was on this podcast like for three episodes, and he was super into Dead Island, and I never could un- never could parse together why. So. Yeah, I, I, Dead Island did not feel good to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, doesn't look good to play either. So. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. Uh, but De- Dying Light, anyone out there, play Dying Light. Good time. Uh, yeah. Like zombies, you'll like it. Yeah, yeah. So that might be something I, I get around to one of these years, uh, you know, when I'm tired of State of Decay 2. So, hey, I don't know, maybe maybe two years after I get tired of this game. So still still chugging away at that. So anyway, um, <laughs> let's 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 move on from there. Uh, John, you were playing some Dark Souls Remastered. Yeah, I have been playing Dark Souls Remastered. Um, it is Dark Souls, and it was re- remastered. Oh, okay, cool. All right, the next game yeah. I've been playing. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there are a couple new, uh, improve, small improvements to the game, other than like the sixty frames per second and the texture work that was done in some spots. Uh, and it's like at, the, at bonfires now, you can. Uh, you can leave covenants and join other covenants instead of having to go find uh, the leader of it in the world somewhere and talk to them. That was added in uh, either two or three. They added that, so that's you know a little. That's a little thing. And then um, there's another thing you can do. Oh, you can use. You can now use multiple items at once instead of having to use one at a time, like the soul things. Um, that was later in the series, and like you can change the size of the UI uh, to whatever you want. Okay. Um, so it doesn't like get in the way when you pause the game anymore. Uh, so yeah, a little stuff like that. Uh, I'm about, I played for about four hours. I'm probably close to um, a quarter of the way through, maybe a third with one of those two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I almost rang the second bell, which is which is the uh, about like the quarter mark, third mark. I'm, eh, I'll say third. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of moving pretty fast. I'm like level twenty nine. Yeah, um, but you've you played this before, so multiple times. Yeah, yeah, I've played the especially the first half of the game, which is the better half of the game. Um, second half kind of falls apart uh, level design wise, and kind of it's just it just isn't as it feels like they started running out of budget towards the end. Um, I still think it's the best game in the series, um, one of my top ten games of all time. But it does have definitely has issues in places uh but yeah it's just a really i'm really comfortable with that game at this point like uh i know it like the back of my hand uh, i've <clears throat> i beat most i beat every boss I came, i've come across so far in like one go i use i two hand weapons just just a walking tank basically so yeah it's a it's a, it's a good time i know you don't, i know you don't like dark souls uh so yeah you don't, kinda... you don't have much to add but uh i think I mean, this game is one of the influential games of like the last decade, if not the most influential in terms of where like the way games are right now, how how many roguelikes there are now, how many souls likes that fucking because they because we can't come up with creative terms or anything. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, and yeah, just how how difficulty has kind of become more popular now in games after after a while where it wasn't so. Yeah, I mean it's it's but it's 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 the Dark Souls you either know and love or don't care about, <laughs> and that's I'm that's kind of where I'm at is don't care yeah. about. So yeah, I I love it. Jason doesn't care about it. Um, don't have to talk about it too much more. I don't think there's anything I need to add. Also, it's a, it's got one of the best open world designs ever. I will stick by that. The metro it does the Metroid thing better than uh, a lot of a lot of games that tried. Especially for a 3D game, uh, just the all the moments where you 
uh, where you opened up shortcuts and come and find yourself back at a previous location and how you can see every location in the world from, from different points is awesome. So. Yeah, that, that is one thing I did appreciate it. Um, you know, and I think, um, man, I, I I forget where where I like heard or read this comparison, but like Demon Souls is sort of like Castlevania three, and then uh, Dark Souls is sort of Symphony of the Night. I could totally, yeah, I could totally agree with that that comparison because uh, Demon Souls is very much a hub game, so it's basically it's very level based essentially. Mm-hmm. But Dark Soul, but Dark Souls just took that format and made it one big. Uh, Dracula's castle essentially yeah so yeah uh, yeah and uh, it's this is one of the few instances where I prefer that style of game to the more traditional like I prefer old Castlevania to new Castlevania as we've talked we talked about off, also off air mm-hmm. but and we'll probably talk about more in a second um, uh, we'll see uh, but yeah like other, like the only other game that I think comes close is uh, Arkham Asylum in terms of 3D games that do this that do the Metroid thing well uh, and of course Metroid Prime but uh, the non-Metroid games, I do it well. Yeah. So yeah, I love I love Dark Souls. I'm gonna. I don't know if I'm gonna finish this. I've finished it multiple times. I've finished it many times. Uh, I'm probably gonna buy it for Switch when it comes out, just to have it on Switch. <laughs> yeah, this is uh like honestly like this one completely like surprised me that it, that was out. Like I just noticed somebody I follow on Twitter was all of a sudden playing it. I was like, oh, that came out. Okay. Yeah, it's uh. It's out. It's Dark Souls. It's 60 frames per second. Uh, it, it does look good. It looks how you remember it without the frame rate issues. Yeah. And uh, so, which is what you want in a remaster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's basically, good God. It, from, frame uh, rate, yeah, yeah. from what I've heard, it's uh, it's basically like everything the uh, the PC people have been experiencing for years, the consoles are finally getting. Uh, it's what they've been experiencing for years after someone that wasn't from software fixed the PC port. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's after the DS1 fix, the legendary DS1 fix. So, yeah, it also comes with the DLC, uh, or, or, uh, which is some of the best DLC ever uh, in any game. Uh, the Atari said the best uh, DLC. Uh, some fantastic, some of the best boss fights ever in that. Uh, so yeah, there's, if you've never played that, that's this is that's maybe reason enough to play some play, play some Dark Souls again. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's all I got. Cool. All right. Well, uh, since we were talking about Castlevania, uh, I'm going to move on to what uh, is basically Castlevania because that series is effective. Well, that and just about every Konami property is effectively dead at this point. Uh, we're playing a oh man, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, which is just a Names, I don't know. With anyway, it's, I don't know. That sounds like a fucking Castlevania ass title to me. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's just I, it, maybe, maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just reading too much into it with the whole uh, menstrual cycle thing. There, it's just like okay, well. Oh yeah, I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just like uh, okay, well, guys, uh, hell of a, hell of a choice there. Anyway, um, basically, this thing plays an awful, awful lot like uh, Castlevania Three. Uh, you. <laughs> You get four characters, uh, except they're except in Castlevania Three, you are limited to like one character that can be your partner character. Uh, this you get all four characters. Uh, there's, um, man, the the guy that's supposed to play like Grant, uh, or basically the Grant stand-in doesn't play anything like Grant. He's uh, less mobile. Uh, he's got a very short weapon that's maybe just a little bit more powerful. The uh, the Belmont stand-in, she is she is fast. She's agile. She can. Uh, She's got a better jump. She's got a she hell of a whip. I, I just like why? Why would you not use this character? I just I don't know. Yeah, uh, the Sypha stand-in is pretty useless. Has almost no health whatsoever to work with. So it's kind of yeah. His his freeze thing is really useful. Honestly. Yeah, I mean he's he's like his ability wise, like the the weapon damage thing. He's or the, like the special yeah. weapon things he's got are pretty cool. But I mean, yeah, the, but like he's got too low health and his weapon sucks. Yeah, yeah. I mean the basically he has the exact same amount of um, time to recover from attack, except it goes like five pixels in his in front of his face instead of yeah, you know, at like an angle too, kind mm-hmm. of. It's like yeah, it's weird. Yeah, it's a strange. It's a real strange choice. And then the uh, the Alucard stand in. Um, kind of a cool character, but just, I don't know, like, the attack is, it, it's this weird thing of, like, it kind of does this, like, 45 degree, like, arc thing of three mm-hmm. bats coming yeah. out of you. It's, yeah. it's a weird... It, it doesn't go very far, either. Yeah, um, yeah, it's not really that useful. Really, the only, the only time I've really found myself using him was when I needed to fly across something, so... 
Um, but yeah, the uh, man, I forget. I, I honestly, I forget the name of the characters here. And I don't think uh, really Mira, Mary, Miriam, 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 yeah, yeah, because yeah, she's that's, the that's... she's the main character that you're gonna play as in uh, bleh, whatever the blood bloodstain is she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dope, dope. She's the best character. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I I I'm kind of digging it. There's I I really like the. Uh, the design choice, uh, like artistically, that it's done, it it harkens back to the first three Castlevania games, uh, well, the NES versions of them, any anyway, um, very well. I, I I really appreciate that as a guy who grew up on those games. Um, it feels maybe a little too easy. I I am not, they, I'm not struggling with this very much. I think the because they made a design choice where uh, when you when one of your characters dies, whichever character you're playing as it dies, uh, you don't get you don't get that character anymore. You lose uh, that character. For yeah, that stage. but you don't. Yes, but you don't lose a life mm-hmm. when you when that happens. So you don't lose a life until all four characters die. Yeah, which is pretty hard to do, and except that maybe a boss fight that you're having trouble with. Um. So yeah, I feel like that's kind of where the lack of difficulty comes from. Um, you know, what, even even then, it's it's more like in the stages. I don't, I don't really feel like I'm having any issues navigating the stages. Like the the platforming is not particularly tricky. Um, like the just the schlub enemies aren't particularly tricky. Like I, mm-hmm. I never really yeah. felt like I was in danger. Like the only time I really like lost a character was when I would like jump and like Again, miss the, the jump the, or the legendary knockback. Of yeah. Castlevania, well, yeah, they, that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. thankfully, yeah. having grown up on those, I've kind of learned like you know, it's like okay, got to be careful when you get to certain things because if like if you run into something, so I, yeah. my, my my timing on those is pr- is I wouldn't say pretty good, but it's good for you know an old man at this point. But um, yeah, yeah, the um, damn, like, and there's this portrait like four stages in that yeah. if it touches you, it just sucks up the character and takes them, and boy, I I like. You know, I'm just expecting to take a hit from it, and then it just sucked up the character. So it took Miriam, and I was like, "Oh, oh. Yeah, great! My character uh, with range and can actually it, jump high enough to attack this thing while it's flying back and forth is gone now." Cool. That's kind of that's kind of a problem because you play as Miriam a lot, but if you lose her, it, feel, it feels like you lose a lot of Castlevania stuff when that happens because you don't because she's she's the whip one. I mean, the other the other guy has a whip too, but it's not nearly as good. Um, oh no, he's got she, a uh, he's got a sword. He he has a, a a chain thing too, doesn't he? Oh yeah, like, it, but yeah. it only arcs forty five degrees straight up. It, yeah, so it, it so yeah, and that's one of his secondary weapons, and you can flip out from that one too. So because it'll have the stand in for the holy water, that'll go. So it's it, it's not really the same, unfortunately. Yeah, it's and his uh, range is not great. I I think the music's pretty good. From what I've heard, it's very Castlevania y. Yeah, uh, it's not too bad. So yeah, uh, I mean, it's the, no uh, Majiru Yamane, but it's it's not bad. Yeah, the uh, I also I'm not a fan of a lot of the creature design in the game. Um, yeah. it, it feels it feels very incohesive to me. Uh, like like I, I don't get like I love I love original Castlevania for its its hokey monster mashup thing that it does, and it feel I feel like it always works to me when I see the things that are in those games. But in this one, it feels like sometimes there's Mega Man enemies in this game. Like those yeah. those giant rock things just feel out of place. I'm not even yeah. yeah. They just feel very out of place every time I see them. Like they don't. Um, and even the enemies, like have you come, have you come across the frogs that are like the uh, the flea men, basically a mm-hmm. big equivalent. So yeah, the bosses are cool, are ridiculous looking, but they also kind of feel out of place too. <laughs> it's uh, it's weird. It. I don't. I don't understand the aesthetic they're going for. Honestly, yeah, it's it's kind of all over the place. Like I said, the, the the character designs that you're playing as they they are they are pure Castlevania. Um, the level design absolutely. kind of feel kind of looks like it. Um, just not as. <sighs> See, for me, like one of the beautiful things about the original Castlevania is, um, it's designed in such a way that like the floating platforms are never floating platforms. They are pieces of the castle that are that are actually sticking out. Um, you will never see just a random floating platform in that game, and it, it's mm-hmm. such a cool design decision. And you don't really get that in this. I'm, I don't know. It's uh, there. 
Yeah, the uh, th- I think there are some like just level design callbacks to other Castlevanias that are really cool. Uh, there's the pirate ship that's straight mm-hmm. out of Rondo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with a boss fight is basically uh, straight out of Rondo as well. At the end, uh, they, it's kind of a mashup of two boss fights from that game. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, you, you mentioned the character design. I love the that they, they stuck with the solid color for every for each character. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I really love that one. I, I think they pop really well too. Uh, just like the um, they do the eight bit uh, nostalgia thing well, while also you know keeping it with adding modern touches to it. Uh, very, like, I think. Shovel Knight is the only thing that's kind of, oh, Shovel Knight did like a 16 bit thing though, didn't it? it uh, maybe more 12 bit. I mean, it, yeah. It, I, I forget what they I think, it, I, honestly, if I'm remembering right, they were saying Shovel Knight could run on an NES if it wasn't for the uh, the amount of colors it was running. Yeah, yeah. So um, I thought Shovel Knight, and also Shovel Knight's like, a, it's, this was a, this is a throw in game, so it's kind of mean to compare them. I just feel like Shovel Knight had a more cohesive like aesthetic going on. Uh, the entire time, like I, I, I like the game a lot. Um, this kind of is this comes is come is feels like um, close to that in terms of quality, but also again, it's also a throw in throw in game uh, for a uh, Kickstarter goal. Yeah. So so it's hard to be too mean to it. It's still pretty cool. Yeah. No, I mean for ten dollar buy in, it's a pretty it's a pretty good game. I'm, I'm I'm certainly like I'm enjoying my time with it. It just it's not scratching that Castlevania itch that I was hoping for. I was hoping for a little bit more push. Yeah, it got... And, it, you know, for me, like, buzz. I normally don't want something that pushes too, too hard against me, especially, like I said, you know, getting back to it, I'm playing State of Decay 2 right now, and that's, you know, pretty difficult at times. You would think I would want something a little bit more forgiving, but, like, when I when I go to, like, these old-school Castlevania-type games, I want something that's going to kick my ass a little bit. I want something that I'm going to die and I'm going to have to restart from the beginning, or I feel like I'm in some sort of, like, constant peril of failure where... I don't know, like th- this, like honestly, I am just, I am not feeling that challenged with even with most of the boss fights. Like it's, I'll go, th- I'll go through with the uh, Zangetsu, um, try to like learn the pattern, and most of the time I'll end up taking it out with just him. Um, but if I die with him, then I'll just switch over to Miriam on the next playthrough, mm-hmm. or the you know the next cycle or whatever, um, because I've gotten the hang of the pattern. I'm like, okay, well now I've got you know better range and more mobility options, so I'm just going to use that and then take up the boss with that really any issues and that's kind of where i'm having a little bit of a problem with it i do like that they um each character has their own life bar so when you switch you can basically kind of start from scratch so occasionally you can i, I i've made a decision where it's like okay well uh this guy's gonna this guy's gonna take some hits here or i'll whittle it down a little bit and switch over to miriam so yeah it's it got it got a lot of buzz when it first came out uh but i feel like it's just okay yeah that's, that's about uh, yeah. where i'm feeling it um, yeah. i'm planning on reviewing this thing uh i am going on vacation but i'm going to be in a car for a long time so when i'm not driving i'm planning on uh, doing some writing so I, right now unless it really turns around i mean we're looking at like pretty middle of the road for me like it's it's looking at like a solid three so that's probably what i would give it to from what i've seen um yeah but it's it is cool it, it does kind of give me hope for bloodstained in terms of just like that the people at least kind of understand like what Castlevania, of course it's, um, Ag- 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 Arashi, right? Ag- mm-hmm. So, I mean, who better, but I mean, <laughs> I guess, but so, and well, this is know. also, he was, he was responsible for uh, Castlevania judgment too. So let's, let's remember that. Okay. Never forget, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I tried to. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And also again, it's a, it's, it was a throw in like bonus thing. So, yeah, that's that's all I'm taking take, take into account. It's I mean it's pretty it's a pretty cool little, little thing, uh, that uh, yeah. if you if you haven't played Castlevania in a while, I guess give it a shot. But there are yeah, that's yeah, about how I feel. It, it it's scratching a little bit of that itch, but it's definitely not. I mean, but there are, I think there's like three other Steam games I could that I have that would probably scratch that itch just as well, if not better. So there yeah. is one that man I forget what the hell it's called off the top of my head, but um like Jeremy Parrish had been writing about it, and it's it's not out of I don't even think it's, I think it was in alpha the last I looked at it, but I mean, it for all the world looked like a, like a, you know, 8-bit Castlevania game, and man, it's, uh, I don't know, like, that, that that's one I'm hoping it ends up coming to consoles and gets off Steam, because, I don't know, I just, I, I always feel like I should want to play something on Steam more, but it just, like, 
the ease of just like you know turning on the console and it's there rather than having to go plug in my laptop to my tv and then set up a controller it's like hey, you know it's kind of a pain so yeah i understand so anyway uh that's about all my thoughts on that one so okay here's here's the big one the big of this <laughs> the big of this one um you and Brittany have both been playing am i uh, correct right in uh... uh yeah we played together uh we do share play i've i've been the one playing um but myself and friend of the site uh co-host of our music podcast uh britney Bashel, uh we have been pl- uh, playing through <laughs> detroit become human together uh we're about four hours three four hours i think so far we put into it um gonna preface this by saying i like beyond two souls better than this game (laughs) (laughs) yeah i beyond two souls uh i enjoyed for its campiness and just i kind of was just along for the ride in that game i did i know jason absolutely hates that game Mm -hmm. there's a review on the site uh of that game and uh while i agree with almost everything he says in that review uh, I just think I took it in stride <laughs> as I was playing it because it's like that game. You go from like Native American, it, it, like a Native American spiritual ghost fight. Uh, you you're also in the CIA at one point, uh, shooting people, and then you're like a 14 year old beating up kids at a birthday party. It's all over the place. It's dumb, but I, I kind of enjoyed the dumb parts of it. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, one decision. I think I was a little like eh, maybe maybe I shouldn't have put that in there, but it, it's there, and I'm, I don't know. Maybe I should just stand by it. Is there? There's a you know image where she's got a gun up to her head, and she's gonna shoot herself, and I'm like probably the least painful way of getting out of this game. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You, you know, know, hindsight, twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah um, uh, but this feels more uh, close to Heavy Rain, and that it takes itself way too seriously. Yeah. Um, which is Heavy Rain's problem and why that game hasn't aged well at all. Um, also, the fact that controlling these games is just a goddamn nightmare. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Like, the guy, like, from what, from what I've, like, kind of parsed together, he, he's okay at putting together a idea in his head. He just needs to realize he can't design the games by themselves, like, the actual, like, game part of it. And he can't write dialogue to save his goddamn life. Nope. I will... Uh, to be nice to this game, I will say the presentation and production values are fucking top notch. This game looks incredible. There are most of these games are, do. Yeah, That's the yeah thing. And, and this is this, and this is just like that. Uh, this is just another one of those. It looks like there are um, photorealistic moments in that game in terms of like environment design. Okay. Uh, that's that really are just like drop dead gorgeous with light with with like the, just the right lighting on it and stuff. Uh, I can't take that away from this game whatsoever. I will say that there are some weird edits from time to time in terms of just like switching from char- between characters and, and dialogue moments and stuff like that, or just reveals. Um, but overall, the production values are incredibly high. And there, this, this game, this, there's a lot of money spent on this game. Uh, a lot of, a lot of fame. There are you a know, lot of. I don't, I don't, I don't really know if that's ever a compliment that its production yeah. values are very high. It just means they shoveled a lot of money at it, you know. No, I, 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 I know. I, I just want to. Be clear, they do have a lot of uh, famous character actors. Lance Henriksen and Clancy Brown both uh, play characters in this game, um, and I I enjoy both of them as actors and a lot of stuff they do. Uh, in this, in this, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Clancy Brown question. is probably the does the best job. I will say uh, he just play he plays a fucking grizzled lieutenant that hates androids. You know, you you know the character type. Uh-huh. Uh, but he does it. He does it well. He, he he's still Clancy Brown, so that works for me. You know, I, I love his voice just in general. So, uh, and the the three main characters I think are performed pretty well: Kara, Marcus, and Connor. Connor, uh, I think this actor nails the kind of uh, uh, feeling of is this is an android talking to you. The other two. Uh, and I've heard this sentiment echoed in other places. The other two kind of feel way too human. It kind of, it, it, and it kind of like in an under in an unearned way, you know. Um, but Connor feels like you know a more a, more android like. Um, so that that can work. You know, it can also he can also come, be, be pretty pretty boring in that sense too. So there's that. But, and then I guess you know that's the end of the nice stuff in the game, the detective stuff is still pretty cool in those games. They kind of do that pretty well. It's not hard, you know, it's just going around touching stuff. But again, the visuals help, you know, with all that kind of stuff. 
but you know it's it's just it's the game doing the androids are people too thing in 2018 and there has been so much media that's done that that i have watched and and played that if you don't do it well, it's it doesn't it's not gonna work for me. And I'm a sucker for that stuff when it's done well. I love that kind of story. Yeah, and yeah. my my thing is is like uh, we you know I think we've even mentioned this off the air a few times, but it's like once uh, you know the latest Blade Runners come out, and you have to look at your thing and be like, well, shit. Um, do we continue down this road because we're definitely not at, you know swinging anywhere near in the same league as this is. Yeah, it's um. It, I mean, it's not even close to what Westworld it, Westworld is right now. So, and Westworld has its own problems. I like Westworld for the most part, but it is also thinks it's way, way, way deeper than it actually is yeah, at this I, point. I, it, it suffers from that. I'm far more interested, or I think I'm far more interesting than I actually am sort of thing. Yes, and that's kind of, I, this last episode was just went nowhere. Anyway, we don't talk about that right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, it, I, I would say, yeah. well, don't spoil it. I haven't watched yeah. it yet, but man, I am, I, I am. I'm almost at the cusp of like, yeah, I should just throw that out the window. Maybe I don't need to watch this. The Americans is wrapping up, and that's wrapping up pretty well. I don't need to watch this garbage. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna finish it. I've, I've liked episodes here and there quite a bit, but anyway, uh, this Detroit Become Human, uh, it's like just story wise, it's just kind of treading ground I've been in before. Like there is some scenario. It feel and also feels like it makes the world around these robots and androids feels very st- sterile and like not. There's not a lot of depth beyond there are good humans and then there are humans that are just vile despicable pieces of shit so <laughs> that are like uh because like kara's first thing and this is was an e3 demo with the abusive father that you have to escape from at one point um he's addicted, addicted to drugs and that's that's that whole thing um so so yeah i just don't feel a lot of attachment to them and then like just the actual gameplay parts are are super boring okay. and and the way you interact with them is this the most fucking bullshit just analog stick movements and all that stupid shit they add for the quick time events just really complex quick time events for no fucking reason hmm. um just having to hold like four buttons at once to do something uh or moving the analog stick and like a in fucking like a half and a, and a and a half circle it's like a fighting game all of a sudden uh <laughs> It, if this was a, if this was actually a fighting game, it'd be way more into it, but it's not. <laughs> um, uh, and like in the tasks you're doing, like early on, you know, they're trying to, to get across that these are, you know, essentially slaves or workers, whatever. I mean, I, f- I feel like they want to get across that they're slaves, but it's you know, it, I, they definitely do want to get that across, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, they, are, they are trying real hard. Yeah, the su- subtlety is not David Cage's strong suit. Uh, yeah. and not many things are at his strong suit. Uh, but yeah, a lot of the time you're just like for the first chunk of the game, you're just doing like household ha- household chores with quick time events. Exciting. And, uh, yeah, and you're navigating these environments with these t- tank like fucking controls with momentum in them for no reason. Like I've always, I hated that about Beyond Two Souls too, and also Heavy Rain is that when you stop moving the stick, the character keeps moving. Uh, Witcher Three does that too. I don't, I've never liked that um, design decision. Uh, it, it's just it, it leads to frustrating bumping into stuff in the environment and stuff. Uh, yeah, let's see what. There are some interesting scenes that go on for way too long. There's a scene <laughs> where you, where. And there are, and like they also, at the end of every level uh, or sequence, there is a flow chart that shows on the screen to show all the possible ways you, uh, all the possible directions that could have gone. It doesn't say what they are, but it has them because they're locked. But it shows you what, what path you took and how many different paths could have been taken throughout throughout the thing. I've I've heard about this. Yeah. Yes. Which, I don't. I at first I saw it. I was like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of neat. I guess you know to, to see, but it also kind of just makes it feel like a video game, <laughs> like very. I, so that seems like a decision yeah. that should have been made to save for like at the end of the game, basically. Like, yeah, yeah. It, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Telltale games, but that I feel that is something they do pretty. Yeah, at the end decision. of the game, like they pick like, the important decisions that you made and like tell you who made them and like yeah, what you're saying. But uh, and they do that here too. Like they show you percentages of how what the world did, and you can do your friend stats. Uh, but also, it, there are some levels that are just really short, and they don't have. 
many is like maybe one branch in there somewhere you get taken. So it just kind of feels pointless to show me that. Um, and so yeah, there's that. Um, and I guess I don't want to sit here and just shit on a game constantly because I haven't finished. I haven't finished it yet. Maybe this. Maybe the ending's good. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. We have, yeah he's, uh, he, he's, it's, he's certainly uh, proven himself time and time again yeah, with that, right? Yeah. Kind of time and time again. Heavy Rain has a totally good ending. Uh, I don't even remember Beyond Two Souls ending. I kind of do. I think <laughs> not really. Uh, <laughs> the game was, uh, that I game was barely do. That game is as jumbled in my mind as the as the as the timeline is in that game. Um, yeah, like I, I, I just it's just not good. Ex- exciting or good. It's just not. It's like like I in like, like I said, I enjoy Beyond Two. I enjoy Beyond Two Souls for the camp, and I'm just it's just not the same. The same here. Like it's not. It's not as ridiculous, and. And then there are just weird decisions, like the the Android's key identifier is that there's a there's a light light up like LED circle light on their on the side of their head. I don't know if you, I don't know if you re- remember that from the any advertisement, but like it's a little blue light on the side of their head. Uh, it changes yellow if they're processing something or if they're having issues also, and uh, and red if they're deviant, which is uh, what the that's a big thing is a lot of androids are going deviant for some reason Ooh. now. Yeah. Um, I keep uh, mentioning. And, and yeah, so then uh, I, I'm assuming there's androids that go after them specifically, right? Yeah. Connor mm. is a cop, mm. cop, cop android. Oh, uh, and, and he's supposed like, to retire these. Uh, he's supposed <laughs> to catch them. He doesn't, he does not retire. He's not a blade runner. Okay. He's not a, he's not a blade runner. Oh, okay. Uh, he, so possibly is, taking out like he, the one aspect of this that might be cool is like yeah, you know a good yeah. combat sequence between two androids. Yeah, he's hmm. like it starts out with him talking someone off a uh, android off a ledge essentially. Was that the uh, uh, like the trailer, yeah, like the reveal yeah. trailer thing we saw? That's the, okay. that's the opening uh, okay. mission. Okay. And uh, uh, so yeah, and but the LED light can be removed pretty easily by the androids themselves. <laughs> and, uh, okay. And, the skin repairs itself after the thing comes off. Who the fuck designed that? <laughs> Why would you design David that? David Cage. Like, wait. <laughs> Cyberlife, I think, is the name of the big company that made all these. Mm. Also, these androids are super affordable, apparently, because everyone has one. Like, it's just like, which is crazy. There's no, it's, this is like 2038. There's no way these things would be affordable. Um, these super advanced human-like uh, creations. Uh, so that's really dumb. I don't know why that's a decision. Uh, yeah, and even like, yeah, just I, I'm trying to think of sequences that I enjoyed. Um, and most of them were Connor's like detective stuff. I kind of enjoyed his back and forth with Clancy Brown's. Okay, <laughs> uh, I was gonna say I wasn't. I thought good. It's okay. Uh, there are. Um, there, there, was a, there was a cool moment I had, I sort of, where uh, I'm going to spoil this, I guess, uh, for anyone that gives a shit. Uh, con- uh, and during an interrogation uh, with a, uh, android, a deviant android that we caught after who had just murdered a man by stabbing him 28 times after he got attacked by a bat. The man attacked him with a bat beforehand. Wow, okay, uh, 28 times. That's uh... yeah. yeah, it was a lot. That's, that's a lot. Uh, it's also, pretty good and dead. Also, uh, <laughs> also subtly... Uh, over the corpse of the man wrote I am alive in the most perfect font uh, in blood uh, so uh, anyway you interrogate him and I made a decision to I misinterpreted what would happen <laughs> based on the decision I meant so he kind of just you know jacked into his mind and figured out what happened so that kind of kind of freaked him out and freaked out the thing and he tried to kill himself and then he pulled a gun uh, out shot Connor in the head and shot himself so i was like did i just kill a main character <laughs> uh but there's a moment and but later and a, a couple scenes later uh a new connor uh, that plays that uh talks to the head of cyber life and uh it's, it's explained that uh all the the new units carry the memories of the previous units uh to uh improve you know uh uh to improve upon themselves 
so they don't make the same mistakes, which is which was kind of an interesting moment. I thought, you know, it's not nothing that's not been done before, but you know, it was it was interesting. I'll give it I'll give it that. Okay. Uh, uh, they call the. You, do you know what the blue substance inside the? Guess what the blue substance inside the inside the androids like the nickname for that blue substance inside the androids is, Jason. Oh, do I have to? Just go for it. Um, go. Blue. I, I don't blue blood. I don't know. Nailed it. <laughs> wait, blue, what? It's blue blood. It's uh, it's the uh. The, the, the wait, nickname. wait, wait! Hold back the fucking yeah. truck up here. No, you can't yeah. be serious. I can't. I can't have guessed it with that half-hearted, stupid. No, fucking... you're hundred. You're hundred percent. It's blue blood. <sighs> Fuck this I game need, in the fire. God damn! Just, oh, I'm yeah. so angry. I want to like just jam my fucking fist into David Cage's mouth and just like rip out his entrails through it. I just God, what a fucking idiot! Why does anyone support? The... Ah, sorry. Yeah, because because Con- Con- Connor uh, was like. He's called. He said, mentioned Ethereum, and Clancy Brown goes, "What's Ethereum? I'm a grizzled cop. I don't know shit about robots." Um, uh, and he's like, "It's what humans refer to as blue blood." And I was like, "Really? That's what? That's the best we got? <laughs> it's blue blood? That's what we get? That's the uh, most creative thing we got there? All right, you know." Well, it's, you know, <laughs> well I mean, it, it's a pretty popular TV series. Maybe, maybe it hung on. That, that, <laughs> right. It's, it's a, it was a subtle reference to, to blue blood. Yep. Hey. <laughs> so, because there are cops, so uh, it all, God, all comes together. A, okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I am gonna finish this game. Me and Brittany are gonna finish this game. Uh, she unfortunately she couldn't be on here to talk about it. She had uh, the gameplay really was what getting was what was getting to her the most. Even though I was the one playing it, she had to watch it because <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was the one that had to watch this stuff happen. Oh. It's me, me like. There, like I had to get a tray of food for a dude for Lance Henriksen uh, right. as Marcus, and he's like, "I made you breakfast. We're gonna get the breakfast." And I had to do a quick time event to move the small tray onto the bigger tray, and I was like, "Why wasn't this already fucking on the tray?" Oh my god, God, fuck you, David Cage. This is so stupid. <sighs> oh my god, I had to fucking move the analog stick and shit, and then touchpad. There's touchpad quick time events too. Oh good, oh good. Yeah. Do you guys realize um, by purchasing this, you've you've officially like just given him the go ahead of making another one of these stupid fucking games? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it was, but I had a good, I, had, I had a good time, you know. It, not with the game, but you know, <sighs> like the camaraderie of it all. It's, um, it, the I, I uh huh, yeah. It's <laughs> I had I, I had to know. Uh, you, guys, even you, guys though both, I, you guys both went down a wrong on, on respect <laughs> ladder with me right now. I just uh, I can't believe you guys did this to yourselves. I really can't. It's uh, it's been a journey, and it's not done yet. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping for an ending worth talking about. I don't care what I don't care whether it's a good or bad reason to talk about it. I just hope it's a uh, you know. <laughs> it's, I don't know whether I've enjoyed this story more or Far Cry Five story more. I'll say that. Um, it's, uh, Oof, okay. I, at least I'm not, I guess I'm not, I'm not getting interrogated every scene <laughs> but, yeah, by someone. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a weird, it's, it's a weird, it's a shitty game. It's a shit game. <laughs> it's a, it's a shit game. It's, yeah. bo- it's boring. I, I could have, uh, I could have told you that just without even playing it. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a David Cage game. It, yeah, it's getting pretty positive reviews too, for the most part. When I've seen, it's uh, I don't boggles my mind. I don't know why. I I, I like these. Apparently, there are scene. There are some poignant scenes in here somewhere. I have yet to see. Uh, People are not point. familiar with like the civil civil rights movement at all. They're like, oh hey, this is original. Yeah, yeah. They kind of they kind of treat the world as if racism never existed. <laughs> well, oh no see that's the thing that's a beautiful thing about the androids is racism doesn't exist anymore because everyone hates the androids yeah it's they there's Skin a whole color no longer matters it's your blood color there's a whole like unemployment thing going on basically because androids do everything now so it's, but they don't really ever dig into that at all it's, it's kind of like just a thing that could have been interesting but they don't <laughs> tackle it whatsoever well i mean david cage has something more pretentious to tell you about so but yeah, but I have to find these deviant robots and figure out that they're also human. I have to become mm-hmm. human, Jason. Mm-hmm. In Detroit? Yes, in okay. Detroit. Well, there we go. Oh, God. I'll just... Oh, I, I... 
the fact that Sony like helped fund this thing, just like guys, come. They got a lot. It got a lot of money. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, Kara, one of the characters, was an original demo for the PS3, right? The uh, she was the Android lady demo, the PS3. Oh, is she actually in this now? Yeah, she's one of the characters no. you play as. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've pretty much gone complete blackout with this thing because I have no interest or desire to play this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I know, and, uh, but I wanted to share with you because uh, it's been uh, it's been a running joke with me to remind you of this game every now and then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just to remind it's me a... how angry I get over David Cage just being a yeah. thing still. Yeah, it, they. Uh, I mean, with the allegations against the studio, maybe that won't happen anymore. <sighs> Was he the guy, the guy that wanted to be referred to as Sun God? Was that him? No, was that the... it wouldn't surprise me. I don't remember, I, but I, I believe he's I believe it was the Sun God. Um, he and Dennis Dyack should start a studio together, and they can just sit there and oh, scream at God. each other. <laughs> <laughs> just the just the worst studio ever. Just like a couple assholes making high art. <laughs> uh, yeah, quote unquote high art. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know what? Let's figure out the uh, let's figure out the like the Latin based word for potentia, and we'll call it yeah, that. That yeah, that'll be the studio name. Yeah, it'll it'll just be too human too, but it'll play like heavy rain. Oh, cool. Ugh, God, I think it's it, it'll, it'll, it'll be called too human with the two instead of a, with the with the number two. I, I need <laughs> some tums. Oh God. Oh Jesus. I man, I wish I hadn't eaten pizza before we did this, and I'm getting heartburn things. <laughs> Just... It's a, uh, yeah, it's a shit game, Jason. <laughs> yep, <laughs> so, unsurprising. Yeah. Very. Uh, and, you know, we... there was there was a few things in Beyond Two Souls. Like even as much as I disliked that game, I found a little bit of something in there. It just, I, I honestly, I, I have tried to erase that game from my mind for the most part. Um, because I, I was just kind of like piece or like you know skimming through uh, my review of it, and I saw it's like I gave it two stars. I'm like two stars. I was like, man. I, I, there, there must have been something there that I saw as a potential redeeming thing that if, like, they had, like, I don't know, like, I think maybe my thing is, is like, I enjoy the, maybe, ideas sometimes that he's got, but it's just, yeah. he, he just yeah, needs like to come I... up with the overall idea, and then the minutia needs to go to somebody else who's capable of writing a fucking sentence that's cohesive. Yeah, like... Or heard um, somebody talk. Like, again, I feel like I would have given the Beyond Your Souls the same score as you, maybe a three, just because I had a good time with it for the most part, hmm. but it... Even though I hate like the like the way it controls and its story is stupid, uh, which is you know I, that's kind of like what those games are. So it feels like I should just I should hate it, but I you know again campiness goes a long way for me. Yeah. But this is just self serious drivel. <laughs> um, you know what's funny? Like I, I um it, this was long before Brittany ever did anything with the site. I think I think this was like when we were first ramping up to do the Life is Strange podcast. Um, we um. I, I think she was talking about Beyond Two Souls, and I like, or I, like, I sent her a link to my review of it, and she was like, "I agree with everything you say in, in there, but I still like it." I'm like, "What? Well, huh?" <laughs> I like, I she like she likes it more than I do. Uh, yeah. uh, I think she likes it less. I, I like it ironically, I guess okay. is the way to put it. Okay. Um, but she, I don't. I think she unironically likes that game. She's the one that got me to play it. Um, <laughs> I don't understand how you yeah. can like see all the points that I'm making and still like find enjoyment out of it, like outside of like, oh, this is stupid, you know. I th- I mean, I enjoy bad movies, so uh, I feel like it felt like a good bad movie to me. But but a bad movie, you can it's a passive experience, whereas like you know a video a bad video game is you're you're forcing your way through it. You actually do yeah, have that to game's do like, something. That game's like that game's super long too. Yeah, I mean, God, yeah, don't yeah. fucking remind me. <laughs> so, uh. But, but I, it's it's I don't know it's it's hard to explain I guess the I think it's just either you you have that part that in your brain and you don't and it's probably a good thing that you don't I guess but uh, I'm you know I'm I'm enjoying my life so it's, uh, you know what for I'm change right. I actually feel like the smarter person on this podcast for not liking this it's uh uh because it's funny Brittany texted me like because about. Because I wasn't sure if we were, because she was just uh, like yelling about how boring this game is the entire time we're playing it, and we were <laughs> laughing a lot. Um, and she was like, "Are you? It's like you just do fucking chores in this game." Like it literally, they thought all we were doing for a while was chores. Oh. Uh, and but then she texted me, and she's like, 
that game was a pile of horse shit, but I want to see, but I weirdly want to see the end of it. And I was like, I kind of do too. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, I wish she could have came on and talked about it, <laughs> but, uh, she could not. Maybe somebody sort of defend it. Like I, I, I am really just biting my head. I don't know. I think she, I, I think she would have been, I think she did more mean to it than I am. Oh, okay. Honestly. Yeah, Cause I, yeah. I, I just don't want to sit here and just, you know, spew venom at this thing for something I haven't I, played and I will not play. So yeah. Again, the presentation's top notch. Like they, they threw a lot of money at this soulless thing. <laughs> so so mm. I guess, it's, you know, <laughs> uh, Soulless but expensive is the tagline I put on the box. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I think uh, I think Wario sixty four tweeted it was like forty five dollars or something like that, and I was like, that's still seventy dollars too much. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I'm just like, no. Uh, you, you would literally have to pay me like a pretty substantial amount of money to play this thing. I mean. We did talk. We did talk about uh, doing it for the site one uh, at one point. <laughs> yeah, that was before I think the first trailer really kind of yeah, and then all the yeah. uh, the stuff about the accusations about him and his studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want. I didn't, I didn't want to associate the site with that bullshit. Yeah, but I, I mean, it might but, be it might be fun for me to do it just to get a uh, just to get a like one more one star review on the site because I think we've only got like three on there maybe. I might. I probably. I think I might get. I might give it a one if I gave it a review. Maybe a two, because it does look. It like there are a lot of production value in that game that does kind of carry. <laughs> it does kind of carry the bullshit. I do that love it. The only positive thing yeah. you could say about this is like how much money they spent to make it. Look yeah, good. it's like it looks really good. <laughs> like it does. It, like the lighting is fantastic. Like it's like some of those scenes are just are stunning, and then they start talking, or you start moving. Yeah. Um, because there are a lot, then it's, there not are multiple, a, then it's not a still shot anymore. Multiple occasions where I forgot, I didn't realize I was playing for a second. Um, so multiple situations that that happened at least, um, which also means they do transitions poorly. Because like Uncharted, at least they feel like the transitions between that game are more natural, and you actually can tell when you're playing, even without a HUD um, or Last of Us and stuff like that. The Naughty Dogs games, <laughs> the. Uh, this or God of War, this, yeah, or God of yeah, God of War, yeah, definitely. You can always, you, um, there is some HUD in God of War too, though. But uh, no, oh, okay, yeah, you can turn the HUD off completely if you want to. Uh, the immersive mode, I think it's called. Yeah, for for as kind of like as little interest as I have in playing God of War, like I, I would I would a hundred times quicker play through God of War. Oh, I would hope so. This, so. I would, yeah. I would, I would be offended if you if you wouldn't. I yeah. uh, would be. And confused and distraught. Yeah, a lot, I, a lot of <laughs> it's, uh, Like I said, the only way I would play this is if a, you know, for some ungodly reason, some site like hit me up and was like, "Hey, we're gonna give you like a hundred dollars to play this and write a review for it." And I'd be like, "Okay, that's that that that, that is the bare minimum amount of, uh, of of cash it would cost me to or cost somebody to get me to play this fucking piece of garbage." Yeah, it is a steaming pile of shit. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, and of course they'd have to provide me the uh, the game too because I am not out of that hundred dollars I am not spending sixty of it to get this, this flaming piece of shit this dumpster fire of a production. Ugh. Oh, God, he's just so angry. I'm glad I'm glad once this is done I can just go play State of Decay two and kind of relax again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, relax with State of Decay two. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, I'll go I'll go relax with some Dark Souls after this. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, that's uh that's about how I feel with it. It's just like man, I. I, I, I would rather try to come back from that first community where I was down like one person left. I'd rather try to make a comeback from that and, and, and see through to the end than play this game. It's, that's how bad it got. Like, it got to the point where my, my last person just like was like sleep deprived, was exhausted, and I was like, well, I, I, I was just like, I'm just going to go balls out and go to go to a place and just take out as many zombies as I can and just die with some dignity. It, but it feels like I would rather just go there and just like let if, them tear me limb from limb. If, if you had to play one David Cage game, gun to your head, got to play. And was, you can't say "kill me." You can't say that. It's not an option. <laughs> well, then, well, yeah. then put the gun out of the equation. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, you can't. You, uh, you they'll just uh, you have to. You just have to play one. Okay. Um, or uh, you have, and you have to, and I include. Let's see. I got Fahrenheit, Heavy Rain. Uh, or Fahrenheit slash Indigo Prophecy, uh, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit, I think, are the only ones. 
I hope those are the only ones yeah. in the wild. <laughs> uh, you know what? I I would probably go with Beyond Two Souls. Yeah, I think I would too. <laughs> Just because, like, video game wise, it feels like it is the most competent out of out of all of them in terms of like actually playing a video game. Yeah, it feels it. It definitely it feels better than this does. <laughs> it, and it, that game felt like dog shit too. Uh, there are some. They, I, I will say that, that game did some action scenes pretty well in terms. Um, the uh, the scene in the desert where you're doing a black ops a, a black uh, like a black ops operation in the desert uh, was done pretty well. Oh, is that the one where uh, ended up with a child soldier? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I thought there were some. I thought they, as far as a like, game based solely around quick time events, it was done, like for action wise, it was done pretty well. Um, yeah, this game you just pick up. I spent a whole level picking up trash in a kitchen. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, because at least in uh, Indigo Prophecy, like the the picking up the trash or whatever was you cleaning up. At when the police are going to barge into your uh, your apartment after you committed a murder, so there was something to that at least. Uh, this yeah, is just I, you picking up trash just for the sake of picking up trash. Uh, yeah, also a small complaint. I, w- I hate that they have a timer on every decision you make in that game, every single one. Yeah, that would be awful <laughs> because I'd probably fall asleep through most of them. Yeah, there's also there's also a moment where they actually don't give you a decision when it seems like there totally is going to be one, okay. like. Um, which was kind of which was kind of jarring, I guess. I and it it made sense technically based on the character you're playing as, but it just felt weird not having a choice in a game. It's all about choices. <laughs> like, like you can choose to play this or not. <laughs> and that is that is exactly yeah. I, I've, I've made my choice. They got that timer ran out, and I made that choice because yeah, ooh. yeah, it's uh. <sighs> <laughs> okay, so so I, I, I guess same question there. What would you, what would you pick? Would it be Beyond Two Souls? Yeah, I think it'd be Beyond Two Souls. And you know, we're probably saying that incorrectly. There, there should be more of a pause between Beyond and Two, right? Beyond, yeah. I mean, there's a colon, right? Yeah, beyond, so it should be Beyond Two Souls because we're just saying it as like one one thing, basically. Yeah. It's it's funny that we're that this is making us think more fondly of Beyond Two Souls. Oh no 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 no, no 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 no! I, I I am just saying like this is the level of diarrhea I would prefer if I was going to get diarrhea. No, I'm not saying it's good. I'm just saying like it's it's making you be like I guess Beyond Two Beyond Two Souls wasn't this bad. Yeah, I it, guess it, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, it only it only lets like wants to like <laughs> at least kiss my neck or whatever before it rapes me. So at least Damn. it's trying to be yeah. sweet about it. I mean, the, yeah. the rest of these just sound like, no, no, just, yeah. I, I do remember not liking Heavy Rain. Like, I'm like, oh, the story's interesting. And then I was like, and I finished it, and I was like, I, did I miss the interesting part? Did something happen that I missed? I think that game's dumb. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indigo Prophecy, I tried like hell when it first came out, like, on the Xbox, and the original Xbox, and I was like, man, I am, this is, this is clunky and poorly written. No thanks. <laughs> It's it's got promise though. I can see it going somewhere. <laughs> like it, it can't always be clunky and poorly written. It can't. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. What twenty years later, they're still clunky poorly and poorly written. written. Clunky, yeah. God, he hasn't learned anything. Another week as we keep buying these stupid fucking things. I don't understand. He's made four fucking games in like mm-hmm. twenty years, right? It sounds yeah. About, yeah. I mean, at the very least, like fifteen. We'll say like four games, and none of them have been good. And we keep like giving this guy money to make games. I'm like, what? Why? I mean, yeah, some pe- some people really enjoy these. They really do. Um, there, to be fair, there is. <sighs> that it's, makes me there, there aren't many things we like it. Ability to vote. Yeah, they, there aren't many things like these games. Um, Good reason. <laughs> uh, I think Until Dawn is one of the few good ones. Uh, I really like Until Dawn. That's one I uh, need. That's one I need to get around to playing. Because the writing, while it's intention, it is intentionally campy, um, so because it, it works for the setting. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, I would. I really like Until Dawn. I would play that over any other games in a fucking heartbeat. Uh, <laughs> even like, and even you hate Telltale games, but they're better games than these are. Um, yeah, I'm not going to disagree with you. Yeah. So even like uh, we Tales from the Borderlands, which we not, neither you or I liked that much. Uh, yeah, I, I I believe the the um, I think the best way I can surmise my my feelings on that whole series was like I fell asleep playing one, and <laughs> it, 
continued like like it, it just that the, you know that thing of not picking an option and you just stay quiet like i woke up and i'm like what the fuck happened like i, I missed like 20 minutes a game it's like oh okay whoops <laughs> and i don't really feel like i missed anything so all right yeah. Uh, oh, last thing, uh, Overwatch has their anniversary event this year, which mean, right now, which means it's my anniversary on this uh, podcast. So uh, two years, going strong. Uh, you know, bring, always bringing good to- content, like talking about Detroit becoming human. Uh, happy anniversary to me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh... Oh, man, I don't know, man. It's just, oh, God. Yeah, just, mm, it's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> I think we gotta. I think we gotta wrap this nightmare up because I can't. I can't. Let's, let's just. Yeah. Let, let's just go with all the cliches here. The the mirror band of dipshits have to end this nightmare because man, I, I I need to go play something that's gonna make me a little less angry. Because man, I am I am I am probably unjustly angry at this game even existing. And never mind that you and Brittany are both playing this thing. Did she actually purchase this too, or she just watched? No, it play? no, I purchased it. Okay. It was, oh, thank God. I'll, I'll do share play. Okay. Um, so. You know. That makes me feel a little better. Yeah, I wouldn't have had us both buy this. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know that sounds like a that sounds like a good point to wrap it up. So yeah, let's yeah let's end this nightmare. Yeah, let's call it let's call it a day and end this nightmare. Uh, you can do all the usual social media stuff on our on our site gamesjunk.net. There's a corner bar that Vanessa kindly put up that has all of our social media stuff. Um, you can follow me at Jason Ariola. You can follow John at John Lucero seven seven seven. And man, um, I don't know. If, we're going to be doing a podcast next week. Uh, I am going on vacation for a couple of weeks. So um, the, the, this is going to be up in the air as to like what we're going to get out content wise for E3. Uh, if nothing comes up, uh, just, I guess, be prepared when I get back. We'll just do a very probably long catch up episode of E3 stuff because I'm going to try to check out for a couple of weeks as far as like keeping up with news and everything. And of course, we're doing it right in the middle of E3 when all the big stuff, but I figure <laughs> I can. Uh, I can yeah. just go to like you know GameSpot and catch up on all the news there pretty easily. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So and we're we're rounding we're rounding close to to 100 episodes here. Uh, you know the big the big celebration before was episode 69, and I, I at least we, wanted to make it to 69. So the, the fact did. that this is con- nice. the fact that nice. this is continuing is. Uh, which ep- which episode was this? 91. 97. Seven. Yeah. All right. We are getting Jake very, Clark. very close to that. So it, it's yeah, it, it's kind of creeping up, and we're gonna have to we're gonna have to get do something to get like Luke, Connor, uh, maybe a couple other people that I've got in mind on as sort of like surprise guests uh, from <laughs> previous previous uh, administrations of the of of this. I mean, th- there's been a there's been a long I don't want to say revolving door of people that have come and gone on this podcast. Uh, I, I I've sort of been the only one that's been on all but I think two episodes of this. Stu- so I'm almost up to fifty. <laughs> getting there. Yeah, you're getting there. So, oh man. That's, yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Oh god. With every game club I've done, too. Oh my god. I am so depressed. Yeah. How many episodes of this I've done? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you know, getting your getting your voice out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's you. You, ha- you too have become human, Jason. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna wrap this up. And we'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. I'm sorry. <laughs> Me too. This is John's last episode. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> it was nice knowing you, man. <laughs>